Today we are going to solve radical equations. Here's our first example. Your first step is always going to be to isolate the radical. That means get the radical on a side by itself with nothing extra around it. So in example 1a, we're trying to get this cube root thing by itself. Our first step would be to subtract 4 on both sides. That will give us 2 times the cube root of 4x minus 1 equals negative 4. And then, how do you suppose we would get rid of this 2 that's multiplied in front? Divide by 2. So we have the third root of 4x minus 1 equals negative 2. Once you have isolated the radical, you need to undo the radical. You need to use the inverse of a cube root function. So this is a cube root. This is an index of 3. We are going to raise both sides to the power of 3. So we have 4x minus 1. That cube root and the cube cancel each other out. On the right side, if you don't know what negative 2 to the third is, you would need to type it into your calculator. And parentheses are, oh, I don't want that. Oh, there we go. Parentheses are your friend. So parentheses, negative 2, close your parentheses, raised to the third. It is negative 8. Do you like how I can put the calculator on the screen like that? It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Do we now know how to solve what's left of this equation? Yeah. We add 1 on both sides to get 4x equals negative 7. And here's the unfortunate thing. It's going to be a fraction. Negative 7 fourths. <laughs> but I don't like that. <laughs> We do need to check our solutions, and this is where you want to use your calculator. Unfortunately, all of our calculators work just a little bit differently, so how to type this into your calculator can be a little tough. We have to go back to the original problem, so back up here to the 2 times the third root of blah, 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 blah. So 2 times... You need to find the third root on your calculator. On these calculators, it's inside the math button. In the math button, it's option number four. So two times the third root of four times negative seven-fourths. I'm going to use parentheses, negative seven divided by four, minus one. I need to get out from under the radical before I type in the plus 4. And then hit enter. I just plugged that whole thing into my calculator with negative 7 fourths in place of the x. And I got 0. And this thing is supposed to equal 0. So did this solution actually work? No. Yes, it did. On example B. Do you see how there's two radicals in this problem? When you have two radicals, you want one radical on the left, one radical on the right. Because then you can square or cube or raise to the fourth or whatever you need to do to get rid of the radical. This is a square root. We undo it by squaring both sides. The square undoes the square root, leaving us with 5x plus 3 equals x plus 11. Is that an equation that you know how to solve? Yeah, sure, is. sure is. So take a moment, pause the video if you're watching, finish solving this equation, and then once you're done, we'll talk about how to check your solutions. Okay, we are going to subtract x on both sides. That will give us 4x on this side. I'm also going to subtract 3 on both sides. So I get 4x equals 8. Did you end up getting x equals 2? Yes, ma'am. Okay. We need to check this solution. Go back to the original. And a lot of this you can do using mental math. We are going to do 5 times 2 plus 3. 
and 2 plus 11. You're just putting the 2, sorry, you're putting the 2 in place of the x on both sides. And you don't even have to fully do all of this. 5 times 2 is 10. 10 plus 3 is, seriously, stop going to the next slide, 13. So we have the square root of 13. 2 plus 11 is 13. Does the square root of 13 equal the square root of 13? Yes, you don't even have to get decimals there. You can just look at, yeah, that's exactly the same on both sides. So obviously that works. X equals 2 is our solution. Ready for the next one? Okay, in example 2A, we again see two radicals, but the problem is both of those radicals are on the left. We don't want both radicals on one side. When there's two radicals, we want one radical on each side. So I'm going to take the smaller looking of the two and subtract the fourth root of 3x from both sides. That will give me the fourth root of 2x minus 5 equals the negative fourth root of 3x. Now I can try to get rid of the radicals. If it's a fourth root, what exponent should I use? A uh, four. Raise both sides to the fourth. On the left, the fourth root and the exponent of four cancel, so we have two x minus five. On the right, this negative is being multiplied four times. That's an even number of negatives, so it cancels. Fourth root of 3x to the fourth, that simply becomes 3x. Finish solving by subtracting 2x on both sides, so negative 5 equals x. Okay, we need to check. So we got the fourth root of 3 times negative 5 would be negative 15. Does anybody see a problem right now? What? Do you remember anything about negatives underneath even roots? Probably doesn't work. It doesn't work. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10. Negative 10 minus 5 is negative 15. If you tried to enter this into your calculator, it would tell you error because you cannot do the fourth root of negative numbers. So it doesn't actually work because your calculator can't compute it. So it is an extraneous solution. An extraneous solution is a solution that appears to work using sound mathematical techniques, but when you plug it back into the original equation, it doesn't work for some reason. Because our only solution was an extraneous solution, our answer would be no solutions. In example B, our first step, when you see only one radical, you need to get that radical by itself. So how do we get rid of the plus 2? Subtract 2. <coughs> Subtract 2. So we will have the square root of x equals x minus 2. How do we undo a square root? Square it. And you have to square both sides. On the left, the square root of x squared is x. On the right, x minus 2 squared means x minus 2 times itself which means we need to double distribute or FOIL or whatever term you use for multiplying binomials. So pause the video, take a moment, double distribute, combine your like terms, get that multiplied out. So you should be able to get it down to this. x equals x squared minus 4x plus 4. The problem here is we have x squared and x in the same equation. Anytime you have x squared and x in the same equation, you want to get 0 on one side, and then, just like the sign by our door says, we love factoring. 
We need to find two numbers that multiply to give us four and add up to negative five. Ways to multiply to get four. You got one times four or two times two. We could get negative five if it was negative one and negative four. So x minus one and x minus four. Do you remember how to solve it from that step? What number would make the first set of parentheses equal zero? One. What number would make the second set of parentheses equal zero? Four. So our solutions, quit moving, are one and four. We need to check both of these solutions. So first let's check one. Square root of one plus two equals one. The square root of one is one. Does one plus two actually equal one? No, it does not. So that is an extraneous solution. Now check four. Square root of four plus two equals four. Again, if this is confusing you, we're just putting a four in place of the x's or before we were putting a one in place. That would be two plus two. Does two plus two actually equal four? Yes, it does. So x equals four is our final solution. Okay, your assignment today, we are going to slightly change what was on the assignment sheet. We're still going to do 22 through 30 evens and 35. Instead of 40, we are going to do 38. We are going to do 42, but then not 52 and not 54. <laughs> 